Hood Hour. I have in studio, and then I'll get back to the phones here. Um, in studio is Gregory Ch- Cheeto, and uh, you may know him as the man uh, Trump called my African American. And this happened at one of Donald Trump's rally, where he called this black guy my African American, and that's Gregory Cheeto. And he's here with us. I wanted to talk to him about that situation and others, as well as taking your phone calls. It's Manhood Hour, 888-77-JESSE. Uh, Gregory, thank you for coming in, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. And so um, just a little bit about you. You're a Christian? You know, I, I like to—I'm uh, very private about religious beliefs and so forth and so on. I tend not to flaunt that. Uh, I do believe in the Bible, uh, God, and I say that in a, a humble way because in this country we have religious freedom. Right. And oftentimes there's this tendency to flaunt our religious beliefs. And I always question whether or not we would still flaunt it if we were in a country that was anti-Christian, like if we were in parts of Africa, parts of India, parts of China. And so when it comes uh, for me to answer that question, if someone sees someone Christian in me or something Christian in me, I'm happy with that. But I'm not the type to go around flaunting that I'm a Christian. And what do you mean flaunting being a Christian? Well, oftentimes, oftentimes, you know, people will use the Christian label for whatever ends they want. And there's a difference between someone calling themselves a Christian and other people calling that person a Christian. You know, people who were Christ-like were called Christians because they were Christ-like. Today, people tend to take on that label for whatever reason uh, as a way of just sticking their chest out as opposed to being humble about uh, their relationship with God. And so you're saying that uh, because there are Christians who are not good examples of being a Christian, you would rather... You were rather to hide, or not hide it, but not let it be known that you're a Christian? I, you know, again, when you say let it, not let it be known, I think the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we act, that defines us as a Christian more so than what we say, or, or, or rather taking on that label saying, well, I'm a Christian, blah, 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 blah. But our demeanor, the things that we do, the things that we are, the things that we are about would show more of a whether or not we're a Christian as opposed to someone saying that And they so are. just for the record, though, you are a Christian? Just for the record, I, I go with the same answer that I gave you earlier. Uh, I don't like to... To me, it's, it's a very humbling thing for one to say that they're a Christian. And I just... I struggle with that because, again, if, if I were over in Africa and... Uh, but you're not in Africa, you're in America, I, and I we am. are a Christian nation. You would agree to that, right? I think that there are aspects of the country being Christian. Are we a Christian nation now? I would have to struggle with that answer. I don't, I don't know that we're a Christian nation per se. You don't know that um, in the United States of America is a Judeo-Christian nation? It was founded upon those principles, but the way it's acting now, one would have to say, uh, maybe, maybe not. The way the people are acting or the way America is acting? Both. And what do you mean by how is America acting that would make you ponder if we are Christian or not, well, Christian when you, nation? When you look at the injustices that occur on every level, that's uh, one indication. Injustice like what? When you look at the income inequality, when you look at— What do you uh, mean by that, income e- equality? What do you mean? Income inequality. Income inequality? Right. What do you mean by that? When you look at the, the wealth disparity between groups— when you look at give me an example. Well, for instance, if you look at the the net worth of the average black person versus the net worth of the average white person, or the average Hispanic or the average Asian, there's what, a disparity there. between the black and the white ones. What is the difference? Considerable. I think it's by a factor of ten, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So more black people black people have more money than white people. No, they have. <laughs> Oh, you Jesse, I love you, man. 
<laughs> that will be the day. <laughs> are you saying that black people have more money than whites? No, I, I'm not saying that at all. And what are you saying? I'm saying that whites have more. And that and that what you call income inequality? That would be wealth inequality. Actually. Wealthy inequality. And, and, the, uh, and so, like, for people like Obama and Oprah and Bill Cosby and all those rapper people who have more money than other black people, are they wealth inequality, too? Now we're talking about something else. We're talking about black people with money with, uh, compared to the, the well, poor okay, people who don't if, have if, money. If, are, if they, want, if, are they wealth inequality as well? No. Why not? They got more money than y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm talking Why about they're it. not I, wealth I, I, inequality. Number one, I, I'm talking as a group. But it, these are what, a group of blacks, well, elitist it, people. Well, look, I don't know that they are elitist. Oh, they're well, elitist. I, I would say Obama probably would be an elitist. Oprah, too. Okay, I'll, I'll give you Oprah. Would and be then an uh, Bill Cosby? Not anymore. Well, his, his <laughs> money still is. Uh, to what extent he has it and has control over it. But the qu question is, are those uh, elites, are they income inequality as well toward blacks? There would be, if you want to hold that there is an income inequality between blacks, then you would have to hold that there's an income inequality between whites and between Hispanics and between So Asians. are there, is there you, an in if, income inequality between black or black? Not based on the definition that I'm using, no. What, what is it based on? Between the black and the blacks? I don't... When, when you look at wealth disparity, there would be wealth disparity between the rich and the poor of any group. Yes. Are you ta I'm talking about inequality. So those blacks who... That, that guy... Uh, remember that, that guy and... Uh, what, you know, Joel, what's his name? His sister-in-law beat him up in the... In the uh, and he started crying? Jay-Z. Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> So Jay Z. Wait, wait, Jay Z. Okay, All right, Jay Z go. and Beyonce. And Beyonce. Are they income inequality toward other blacks? I, I'm I'm really struggling trying to understand the point you're trying to make when you say income inequality. They have more money than the white folks. Than some white folks. There, so there are some are white they, folks with right. far more money than Jay-Z So are and Beyonce they income combined. inequality to, when it comes to black and black? Income inequality with respect to black and black. Again, if you want to hold the definition that you're trying to get to, then that would apply across the board. No, I'm just asking about the black on black. Is there an income inequality between, between black on black? Define income inequality with respect to this. Well, thing. I'm just repeating what you said. What do you, how do you define it? When I talk about income uh, inequality, I'm looking at the gap between uh, the races, specifically. Right. Oh, between so, uh, the whites, the blacks, Hispanics, and the Asians. What's wrong with white people having more money than blacks? The issue is not uh, white people having more money than uh, blacks with respect to right or wrong. The issue was how it was acquired, because you can have any particular group who is gaming the system or uh, doing things that are at the least bit unethical, who are taking advantage to get to that point where What's they are. What's wrong with the way the white people uh, got their money as opposed to the way Oprah or uh, Snoop Dogg and all those people getting their money and other blacks who don't have as much money? What's wrong with the way white people got their money? Well, it depends on which white you're talking about. There who are, are some, you talking white, about when you whites. speak of income inequality? Who are you referring to? I'm talking about across the board. I just, I just got through saying that the wealth inequality is across the board. There's, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? There's yeah. a lot wrong with it if it was acquired wrongly. What's when, wrong when with it? When you game the system. When you, look at Congress, for instance. Congress is purchased by both, uh, both houses of Congress are purchased, period. They're bought, Okay. Those leg the legislation that comes out of D.C. What do you mean they're bought? Lobbyists, corporations, special right. interests and, have, and, have and what purchased races, our government. Which, what races do we have in Congress? It just, is it just white people there? Over 90 percent, yes. It's mostly white in Congress? Yes. And so it's, is it only the white people who are being bought in Congress? There are some blacks. Everybody is bought. Well, I shouldn't say everybody. I would dare say 99.99% of Congress is purchased, yes.
And so the blacks who in Congress they've been bought to? Without a doubt, if they, it, if, if they have taken the money. And so are they hurting black people by being bought, the blacks in Congress? Anybody in Congress who was bought, who was purchased, the legislation that they pass will hurt blacks. Uh, okay. So let me ask. So you're a Christian. I went, <laughs> kind of. You, uh, you won't let that go, will you? Are you a Democrat or Republican? Neither. Were you a Democrat or Republican at one point? Republican. Republican. Have you ever been a Democrat? Never. And so I wanted to talk to you about this thing that's going around that says that you have turned on Donald Trump. The great white hope. <laughs> and so, first of all, is it true that you no longer support Donald Trump, the president? You know, this news story has taken on a life of its own. That's why I'm asking you. Is it true? I know, and I'm getting to that. Uh, Donald Trump has my support in the things that he is doing well. I think the economy is doing pretty well. He has my support there. But to say that I, I've turned my back on him, and, and let me make something perfectly clear. Uh, you know, there's a story going out that I hate Donald Trump. I don't hate him. I don't have room in my heart. I don't have the time to hate anybody. You know, we just had a little disagreement, but I don't hate Donald Trump. I would not want to be in his position. I pray for the man. You, I pray for the man. Uh, is it true that you no longer support Donald Trump? I just got through saying that I support him, and I've said this over and over So and you over didn't again. turn on him? No. Um, is it true that when he first, did, did he say, my, when you at a rally, right. and he called you my African-American, my African-American? I was at a rally in Redding, California, June 3rd of 2016, and he was there doing his campaign thing. Uh, I got to the front. A friend of mine, Sheldon, helped me get to the front, VIP section. And did he call you my African-American? He did. He called you Pacific, Pacific. specifically that. He did. And when he first called you that, were you okay with that? Well, there's a backstory to that. You know, when he said that, the, the media shows, just shows him pointing and saying, there's my African-American. But was he a, pointing at you? He was, but there was okay. a backstory to that. The backstory was he, was he was making a statement about he has a great friend, a, a, a black guy who was a great friend, whatever. And he was wondering how he was doing. And I said, I'm here. And when I said, I'm here, that's when he pointed. Right. He didn't just look out in the audience and say, oh, there's a black guy, I'm going to... Uh, say, there's my African-American. And so the media, the, only, the AP f was the only one that got that story correct. It, the AP called me and asked me what, what the true story was, and I told them. But the media had already taken it and spun it the way they wanted to of spin course. it. Of course. So did he call you my African-American friend? He didn't say friend. He just said my african I mean my African-American. Right. And when he said it, were you okay with that at the time? Well, I was okay with it because you what were he, happy with that at the time. Because what he said after that was, "Aren't you the greatest?" And I said, "Yes." Well, when he said, "My African American," were you happy with that? No problem. In the context that it was done, there was no problem with it. When the president said it and did it and pointed, were you happy with that? No problem at the time. There was no problem in the context in which it was done. Like I said, he said, "Aren't you the greatest?" So when the president said, my African-American, and whatever else he said, were you happy with those words at the time? No problem. You're using the word happy. What this was, this was basically a heckling joke that went south. I know, but can you answer that for me? Were you okay with the words when he said it? In the context in which it was given, yes. Meaning that the at, at the time that he said it, it was no problem for you. There was no problem in the context in which it occurred when, when he said. What do you mean by context? I just got through saying that when he said that, I had already pointed, I had already raised my hand as a joke to say that I'm here because I was one of only a handful of black people in the audience, uh, approximately four thousand people in that hot tarmac. I was a, one of. <laughs> had he ever seen you or met you prior to that day? No. He had never seen you or heard of you or met you prior to that day when he said, my African-American. I can't say that he never heard of me, but I never met the man. I never spoke with him before. And he had never seen you before, as far as you know, when you said that, when he said that. I don't know what 
intelligence the guy has. No, I said as far as you know. As far as I know. You had never seen I mean, he had never seen you or heard of you before that day, right? I don't know. As far as you know. I don't know what the guy knows. That's why I said as far <laughs> as you know, you had he had never met you. You've never met him or seen you prior to that day when he said I don't My have African American friends, for you know, right? Again, I don't have the intelligence that he has with respect to the the data. And Do you know what I mean when I say as far as you know? As that means you don't know if he knew who you were. I can't say what you want me to say uh, an absolute make an absolute statement. I can't do that. What I'm saying you is you can't that say that what I am the president saying had never met I, you in person. I just got to be saying that the president had never met me. I've never met him. I never spoke with him on the phone. Why did you go to his rally? Because I wanted to see and hear for myself what he had to say. Um, and, and because you're a Republican, right? Yes. Did you vote for him? I did. You voted for the president. And were you supporting the, the whole man up until that day? I was not supporting anybody up to that day. That's why I went to see him for myself. How do you see President Trump? Now or then? Then and now. I went to the rally because when I looked at him in the media, there was this circus. They were making all these statements. They were making all these stories. And I was trying to figure out how in the world this occurred. And so I went to the rally to see him and to hear him speak for myself, to understand more why he was under constant attack by the media. So what's your impression of him? What was your impression of him prior to going to that meeting? I basically had. I was open. I didn't. I didn't know much about him. I, I'm not. But one you to voted say, for him. That was after the fact. But let, a, Jessica, can I, he had been in office you know, you're, for you're, almost you're three just, years. You're just throwing question after question without letting me finish what I'm trying. The points that I like to okay. make. Okay. Uh -huh. I didn't know anything. I'm not one to sit in front of a television and watch it. You know, Donald Trump. I'm not a Donald Trump groupie. Again, I went to that to hear what he had to say. Right. And I was pleased with what he had to say. Right. And so he got my vote based on what he had to say, in addition to being anti-Clinton. Uh, what, uh, what, when did you go to this rally where he said, my African-American? I said earlier, it was June 3rd, 2016. And this is 2019? Yeah. Why is this just coming up? Why is what just coming up? This whole deal with you uh, and the president about my American, my African <laughs> friend. This is 2019. This, Why is it just coming up been, now? This thing has been, this thing has never died. Oh. <laughs> and so your personal impression of the president is, was what prior to this incident? Again, I, you know, I had nothing on which to go by other than these media sound bites. What's and your so, impression of him now? One of the things that I will give Donald Trump credit for is that he is resilient. Right. He's a fighter. Uh, I can't think of any other person that could endure the onslaught of, neg of negativity and media butchery that he has gone through. So I think he's, a, I think he's, I give him kudos for that. And what That's else? How else do you see him? I see him as, uh, I think it was Jehu who drove the chariot wild. Uh, I see him pretty much as a, a bull in a china shop, which is a good thing. In Do you that. believe he is a racist? I've never called Donald Trump a racist. Do you I, believe that he is for white people only? I would say that he has a white superiority complex. To say that, that he's for white people only... That's a bit of a stretch, but I will say that he has a white uh, superiority complex. Do you believe he's, what is a white superiority complex? What is that? You know, when a person has a white superiority complex, they are pro-white, period. What's wrong with that? Well, if you're the president of the United States and you uh, pass laws that benefit your group, the whites, then that's a problem because that excludes people like us. What law did the president pass that exclude everybody else but white people? When you say excludes, now you're making absolutes. What I'm saying is that— but You said he passed, when you pass laws that let me, let, only let, go for the white let, folks and not for others that leave you out. 
what laws has he passed or a law that he's passed when you that exclude everyone but white people when you when you look at what he's done it shows that he has a white superiority complex when you look at his cabinet we only have one black in there, as far as I know, uh, Ben Carson. When you look at the White House interns— I want to come you, back to—I'll come back to that. What when, law when, has the president passed— No, 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 you're skipping this question. What law has the president passed that excluded everyone but white people? There, are, you, you can't say that there is a law that excludes you everybody. You said that when you pass laws that exclude everyone but white people, When but you us, pass laws and when you do things that— What law did he pass? First of all, I didn't— you're making you're making something that isn't what I'm saying. Well, what, what, are you I, saying? what I'm saying that when you have a white superiority, you can have a black superiority complex for all that. Matter. Well, we talk about the president. We are, and and what I'm saying is that when you have a white superiority complex, your people come first. When you when you look at when what, you look at his what judicial, has the when president you look at, done to imply that he had a I just got through laws. saying I just got through saying what law did he pass? You're we're not talking about that. we're not talking about laws. Well, right why now. did you bring that up then? Because I'm said. giving you an example. The, what you said, when you, you pass example, laws, Jesse, uh, when you pass laws that exclude everyone but white people, first that's of all, I did not say. Supremacy. I did not say when you pass laws that exclude everybody. But well, no, why did you bring that saying. up about the president? because I'm giving you an example. What law did he pass? I did not say he passed a law. You cannot pass a law. Well, you probably could now, but passing a law is not really the issue. What I'm saying is, when you have a white superiority complex, when you have any superiority complex. Your people come first. And again, when you look at his cabinet, when you look at his interns, when you look at his judicial appointments, that is showing clearly that there's a white spirit or complex. How is that? Who's in there? Who's in there? Nothing but whites. But why would that indicate white superiority complex? Maybe best qualified people? How about that? How in the world can you say that they're best qualified when these people don't even have experience? What do you mean? When you look at his judicial appointments, those people are given preference, period. His group is given preference. Even uh, Clarence Thomas made the point that when it came to having his interns, that Do he was not the going to have uh, go the, the way that everyone else had gone through with their buddy-buddy system. Should I take the break, y'all? Uh, Hold on a minute. We'll take a quick break. No, no, we're, back, we're staying right now. Calls, well, we'll take some calls. <laughs> So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Is that, uh, who was that? That was Isaac. Uh, Isaac! <laughs> From Mississippi. Right. Amazing. What's the name of his group? Uh, that's just a song and it's Too Far. That's the name of it? Too Far is the name of the How song. How can people get it? They can go to iTunes and type in Isaac Palmer and they'll find his songs and amongst others. Amazing. So, we got to get to your phone calls and D-Lives and all that good stuff in a minute. I'm talking to Gregory. Say your last name. Cheeto. Cheeto. <clears throat> Sound like Cheetos. No, well, Cheetos. <laughs> well, Cheetos are, are less expensive. And uh, we'll open it up, the uh, treasure chest right now, folks. So, go to the treasure chest, whatever that means. Uh so Gregory is the guy that went to a Trump rally up in uh, Redding, California. Redding, California. And at the time, you were a Republican, right? Right. And the president said, that's my African friend. I mean, African-American. And you raise your hand. I'm here. No, no, I raised my hand first. 
And then that's when he pointed that's out. That's my African American friend. As a joke, that I raised my hand. And did you know he was just being funny and making a joke? When he said, "That's my African American." Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, it, you had to be there to to really understand everything because it was funny. I mean, everybody uh, around us was laughing. Yeah, yeah, it was funny. And so, do you believe that the president is a racist? I would not call him a racist, no. Do you believe that the president is for white people only? I would say that he is for white people, but I wouldn't say white people only because you, that's a little bit that's a little bit absolute. Have you ever said that the president is for white people only? I have never said that the president was for white people only. Have you said that the president is for white people? Yes. But not only. I've said that the president has a white superiority complex, and in, in that context, he would be for whites, yes. And so do you, you still feel that way about the president? I do. And when you say whites, for, he has a white complex. White superiority complex. Meaning that he care about white people first. Well, it would be, it would be tantamount to saying that Louis Farrakhan has a black superiority complex. And does that mean that the president care about white people first? Yes. Uh, and so you, so you never said the president is for white people only. No. Okay. Here's a soundbite I want you to respond to. Let, uh, let me hear this. Let's see that, Joe. So, right. Uh, what have you seen since Trump's become president? What has changed your mind about him or and about the party? Well, I mean, he and the party have just shown that they have no interest in any other group but whites. You know, whites are the primary group. Everyone else may, may get crumbs. So is that you saying that the president is for whites only? That's not me. That's not only. Was that you? That was me, but that does not say only. You didn't say the word only, but you were saying he for whites and others may get the crumbs. Does that say only? Well, I did not say only. Repeat you're, that you're trying. Re, let's repeat it. Let's, you didn't use the word only, but it means only. So, Let, right. uh, what have you seen since Trump's become president? What has changed your mind about him or, and about the party? Well, I mean, he and the party have just shown that they have no interest in any other group but whites. You know, whites are the primary group. Everyone else may, may get crumbs. So you believe that the president, that was you, right? That was me. On CNN. On CNN with uh, the, Don Lemon. The president's enemies. Right. You know, you went to the enemies, right? David was uh, taken care of by the enemies. We're talking about you and CNN right now. We ain't talking about well, David. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm an enemy here. You went to the <laughs> enemy of the president. I'm in the enemy right camp right now. Why you say that? The way you're treating me. What do you mean? Look at you. I mean, you know, <laughs> see, even your producer's laughing. What do you mean? Now, How you feel like on, come on, let's go. So you believe that the president is for whites only? I did not say whites. You keep using that word only. Let's play it one I, more time, uh, It says primary and may. Those are key words in there. Primary and oh, hold may. Hold on a minute. Hold on. So right. Uh, what have you seen since Trump's become president? What has changed your mind about him or, and about the party? Well, I mean, he and the party have just shown that they have no interest in any other group but whites. You know, whites are the primary group. Everyone else may, may get crumbs. What has the president done or said that he is for whites and that others may get the, the crumbs? Well, let me, let, me re, let, me put, let me put it to you this way. What programs has the president instituted that were specifically for the benefit of any other group? What? Educate has the president a done or said so that words, call you to say that he has no interest in, in any other group? The very answer that wise. you're giving me right now proves my point. He has not instituted you a single made the program. Statement, I certainly, uh, and, I'm, Gregory, and I'm backing it up right Gregory, now. You made the statement. I'm, make, I'm backing it what up right now. What has the president done or said the president that has, he has done. no interest in any other group but whites? The president has done exactly what I'm saying in that he has not put forth a program specifically to benefit blacks. What kind of program do y'all want? That would do y'all? Yeah. Oh, I, you're not black. It's just me in, in, in this room. Okay, all right, Jesse. What <laughs> program do you guys want, you people want, that make you think that the president is for you? When, when you look at 
the plight of blacks, period. When, when you look at us, we're, we are the lowest on the low. And whose period. fault is that? When you look at— Whose fault is that? It's the white, the white government that has been instituted since— Specifically, let's go back to 1930s when what you had the FHA and What has the government the done, the white government done, to keep you down when personally? You, when, what when have you, they done to you keep look you at, down? When you look at the FHA, when you look at the VA, when you look at HLLC— What does that have to do the, with you? It has a lot to do with me what? because I was not— be, When you look at whites, going back to wealth disparity and wealth inequality, when you look at those programs, those programs benefited white. They excluded blacks, Okay. When you look at Levittown in New York, back. when you look, I when you heard look at Levittown, before. Because well, you may have time. heard it, but you don't want to believe it or accept it. Gregor. But the fact remains that wealth is generated that Gregor, way, you said and we, on to C- our detriment. You said on CNN that the white, that the president and other whites have no interest in any other group but whites. Right. What has the president done or said? I've just to got make, through telling you, Jesse. I don't want, the, the, all the, the, that the, stuff was established before the okay, president. Okay, so in other born. words, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't even count. It doesn't matter what where has we are the right president now. done since I've been in the got White House. I'm saying that since the president has been in the White House, he has done nothing specifically to help blacks or any other group, but he has so, done everything to help whites. When you look at the white, what when do, you look at the white. Principal, when you look at the white cabinet, when you look at the white interns, when you look at the white judicial appointments, that is. Right on with respect to him not giving a rip about anybody else but putting whites first. Amazing. So let me it is ask, amazing. When the president cut back taxes, that didn't benefit the blacks? No. When, when you when, look at it really— When the president when, bought wait, in wait, jobs— wait, wait. Hold it. Wait, wait, wait. When wait. the president bought when, in all these jobs and jobs? all these blacks what? were working now, that didn't help the blacks. When you look—Jesse, you're not getting the full picture. When you talk about helping blacks, the amount of, of tax— that was cut with respect to any benefit that blacks received was negligible. You know, uh, last report I saw was 1.2% increase in wages. You're not asking 1. my question. When the president wages, brought it back, man, you're, not, a, you're job. not even hearing me. You don't, what, you don't even want to hear what I have to I say. Just want, I want you to answer the question, then I will hear you. Okay, when the president so brought it back, okay. when the president brought back all these jobs as president and black people gone back to work, that's not helping blacks. What jobs? Is that helping What black? jobs? No, just you, you're telling that. me. You're telling you me jobs. How can, more... I, how can I answer answer your question? You don't even give me when you don't even give me the full answer. You don't know that there are more black people working under this president than any president in the last fifty years or so. That's I I doubt if that's true. Well, why did you admit that the economy is doing well? Just because the economy is doing well doesn't mean blacks are doing well. So blacks look, are not look, doing. Look, look up and down the street. Blacks are look, not doing well. No. Amazing. It is amazing that they're not doing well when they should. Did they do well under Obama? I would say no. Did you vote for Obama? No. Um, do you believe the president is a racist? For the fifth time, no. And you believe that the president and other white people, uh, let me just so I'm here. The president Come and on. other white people have no interest Get it straight, in Jesse. any other group but whites. You believe that about the president, right? When I said that, you also left out some words. I said primarily and may. Others may get crumbs. Right. But, but the, you the believe that his primary whites. interest is in whites. Only. Clearly. Okay. I've just said that. Amazing. It is amazing. It's um, disgusting as well. So if um, so, you don't believe that black people are doing better under this president when it comes to uh, working, and money, and whatever else, right? You don't believe they're doing better. Better than what? Better any than they were other, under Obama? Any other president. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but when you— You when don't you, believe it, right? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the one thing that, that, that needs to be brought out is you're asking me to compare, and you're not giving me something to compare it to. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but when I look at black people, I do not see them doing better. And if you want to say that you know, their increase in wages is maybe 0.5%, then that would be better. So do if you, you want to hold that argument, then then fine that they would be doing better. Do you believe that black unemployment is a record low? No. You don't believe it. When, when you, so when you look at CNN, again, the enemy of the president that you went to, when they Jesse, said that— it would be that, so nice if I could finally get an, a question that I can answer fully that, without you just barraging, barraging, barraging. I know you want to give me this— well, you don't want to hear it. When, you, when you, CNN you, reported you, you, what that— What you want are sound Let bites. me just ask this. When the CNN reported that black unemployment is a record low, did you believe CNN? No. Oh, you thought they were lying? It's not a matter of lying. It's a matter of 
having statistics that are insignificant, that mean nothing. When you say that black unemployment is the lowest that it's ever been. CNN said it. Were they when, lying? Based on what CNN had in front of them with that number, and that number is holding, they can have it. That's fine, but that number does not mean hardly anything because it doesn't take into account it doesn't take into account the true number of blacks who are not working. What are they when lying? you look at the number of when you look at the number Were they lying? If CNN is lying and everybody else is lying if they use that same data. And so after this happened with uh, the president, you no longer uh, are a Republican, right? You became an independent or something? Right. And why did you leave the Republican Party? Republican Party up there was inhospitable to blacks. What do blacks want? What do you people want? What do you people want? Yeah. Well, you sound like Ross Perot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? What do want? you people want? In order to what know you, that we— you're, you're blacker than I am, and you're saying, what do you people want? In order for you people to know that we care about you, what do you want? You know, there have been so many historic injustices with respect to the government— that has allowed whites to prosper and kept blacks from prospering. And again, if you want to go back, you said you heard it before, you don't want to hear it again, I'm sure. But when you go back to the FHA and the VA and HLL, HLLC, those loans that were given to whites that excluded blacks, the same with the farms, the same with the home improvement loans. When you look at all that stuff that allowed whites to acquire wealth, that, and with that wealth, to acquire more houses and to educate their children. You don't want to hear that. So you believe that that stopped the blacks from prospering? It, it set forth an unequal playing field. So how did Oprah, Louis Farrakhan, always, you know, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, uh, Obama, and Big Mama Michelle, and all these preachers with money? How did, how did, did Jeff, they all how did get, get his money? How did they all how did get so much pay money? Taxes? How did, they how did get, Amazon not pay taxes? How did they how get past? How did Verizon? Rate, not, not. How did they get wealth if if white people were holding well, other I black mean, people back? How did they just so well? Let's go back to uh, how did they what's, what's so her well? name? Uh, no, I'm asking the about the blacks. How did There's they? There's always so going to well? be an exception, Jesse. So what was their secret that caused them to get paid? Did they ever the, tell you? No, I've, I've not. I've not met Oprah. I've not met Jay Z. Why don't you ask them? Since they, if if if, if, they if got Oprah came in here past, right now, I would ask her. If, if they got paid, if Jay Z came in here right now, I would ask him. So you don't have an idea? Do you love white people? I love everybody. How about white people? I love everybody. Do you love white people? I love everybody. I'm only asking about white. I love everybody. Do you love white people? I love everybody. I, I love people ask, of all stripes. I didn't ask about everybody. Whites would include everybody. Do you love Jews? I love everybody. How about the Jews? I love everybody. Do you love the blacks? I love everybody. You're not going to answer that question, huh? No, because you're, you're making sound bites, and it's clear Are you that you're, you're, you know, you're trying to get me to say things that it, it just isn't right. But the point I'm What's trying to make right? is you're playing a game on, on radio. What I'm saying and what I've said is that I like, I love everybody. I didn't ask about everybody. Everybody is included. I didn't period. ask about that. I told you I like everybody. That, that would have saved you a whole lot of time instead of going group by group by group. Do would I love have, the Eskimos? Would have yes, saved me time when I asked that you love white people? Had you said no, wouldn't that have saved time? No, because you would have gone on to some other group as well. Black no, people, I would Jews. not have. I would not have. Why, well, why did you say Jews and then blacks then? Because you wouldn't answer about the whites. I said everybody. I only asked about the whites. That was so that Are was you wholesale. for open border? No. You want a wall around the border? I think a wall would be good to secure the United States. Do you want a wall around the border? I take one. Do you want a wall around the border? I want a wall around the border, but I want it paid for differently. How do you want it paid for? If you had a program in, a, in effect that would stop all of this uh, illegal welfare to illegals, that would be more than enough to pay for the wall. Mexico would pay for it, but let me ask. Um, How is illegals are coming to our country, right? And long story short, blacks are being affected first and foremost because they are moving into the black community. They are attacking black people. They are taking the job. They're overcrowding the public schools, which are no good anyway. And they are running blacks out. Does that bother you that that is happening to the blacks? Yes. And so for that reason, you want the wall up? No. You don't want the wall up? You're asking, you, you, those are two different questions. You asked about if I wanted to wall up for the blacks, and I said no. Then you asked if I wanted to wall up. 
that I said yes earlier to that. So let me talk to. Let's take some calls real fast. I know you're supposed to stay for only thirty minutes, but can we hold you over? No, you don't want to take. I any don't want to be here anymore, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, we'll hold over. Come on, <laughs> let's go to uh, Anthony out of Chicago. Anthony, you're on with Gregory. Hey, Gregory, how you doing, Jesse? How are you, boy? Oh, good. Uh, how are you, Anthony? Well. Uh, listen, I'm a little bit upset here. Just outside of Chicago from the live chat. Just want to let you guys know that I mean, you're supposed to start off with a manhood album. Uh-oh. Hold on a correct? minute. Hold on a minute. Let me uh, take that call. I, I, I don't have time for that right now. Let's go to Richie out of Boston. Uh, talk to Anthony. Uh, uh, let's see. Richie, you're on with Hi, Gregory. Hi, Gregory. Hi. Is it Richie? Gregory, I just, Richie. I just have a quick question. And by the way, I love you and I'm white. Okay. I, I, I love you. You look really good in your suit and stuff like that. And, <laughs> Thank you. Know, you. You're, you're doing your 2019 world tour. Oh, world man. Tour. I'm in um, the place for it. <laughs> what was your inspiration for using the, the quote unquote crumbs? What was my inspiration for it? Yeah, I, I, I'm curious. Well, what I'm saying is that a lot of these government programs uh, benefit the group that they're targeted to. And. The other people may get crumbs. That's what I'm in reference I, to. I, I, I didn't ask you that. I said, who is in a person was your inspiration to using that word crumbs? Who was your inspiration? Male, there, female, black, white, doesn't matter. Who was your inspiration? There was no person for that. No, no prominent Democratic leader from San Francisco used that rhetoric? You may know more about the people in San Francisco who would use that than I do. I don't know. I doubt that. Well, I mean, give me. Who are you talking about then? Help me I because don't know. I asked you the question. Someone used the word crumbs, from, and she. I'll give you a hint. Is from San Francisco about the president's tax break. Well, I don't know who you're in, in reference to. I don't know when that statement was made. That was my. Those are my words. I don't have to copy anybody else. Those are my okay. words. Okay. Okay, Jesse. I love you. I gotta go back to work. Nick. Take Joel, love you guys. Gotta go. All right, thank you, Richie. Do you love the president? I, I, I love the president. You love President Trump? I love everybody. Do you feel any sense of guilt in the way that you're going around and bat mouthing him or First of all, trying I, to put him down, I, saying I, that you, he he put white people, he and other whites, uh, what, what is worse? Uh, uh, for, for more, for the white. Let's see. I want to make sure. I Go ahead. Right get, here. Make it. Get it right, Jesse. Uh, when he said, when you said that he's for the whites, and more, don't say only more so than other groups, they only get crumbs. Do you feel badly saying that about the president? No more badly that he does doing it. So you don't feel bad about that? No. Amazing. Um, <laughs> will you be voting for him in twenty twenty? It depends on who is running. Let me go to. Um, Drew out of Georgia. Uh, Drew, you're on with Gregory. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Hey, Drew, real fast. We're kind of running out of time here. Go ahead. Hey, I got you. I got you. One thing with the uh, the election coming up, man, I, I noticed that a bunch of prominent Democrats and uh, Democratic leaders in, in the black community, if if someone comes at us with facts, the first thing we have to do is say, the first thing a Democratic leader says is, oh, he's racist. Oh, he's racist. It's like they throw buzzwords out mm-hmm. to overshadow the facts that, you know, a Republican or someone that's not Democrat tries to give blacks, but uh, it's overshadowed when someone says, oh, he's racist. Oh, he's racist. You look at some of these panels that's been going on lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and you, a, a Republican can be given the most amazing facts in the world, and a, a Democratic person or, or leader would say, but he's racist, but he's racist. Why is it always the go-to defense for the Democrats to say that, oh, he's racist, even though facts are being presented to show that we are doing better in some some cases in America now? You said that he's not doing anything, but he, he he's donated millions to HBCUs. 
he's he's putting money in in uh, uh, urban areas to try to try to you know create economic development there. So he is doing things. And he's the helping to let the blacks out let, of jail and prison. Let me let me ask right. you. Let me, are you saying that he gave his own money to HBCUs or government money? Oh, no, I'm not saying. I, I, I don't know. Okay. No, I, I, was, I, was, I was just asking because it, it would be new to me that he gave his own money to the HBCUs. That's why I was asking questions because I, if he gave but money to the HBCUs, know that since being then, then, president, then I could say president, he's given tax dollars to black colleges. No, I, right? I know he's done that. Is that a good thing? It's a, a necessary thing. Is that for white people? White people are taking over the HBCUs. You say that's unnecessary? Pardon? You said that it's unnecessary that he gives to HBCUs? No, 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 no. I said it was necessary. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, thank no. you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Um, I got to ask, um, I know that you're a male. Are you a man? Am I a man? Yes. Defined as? Are you a man? Define it. You don't know what a man is? I do, but I don't know what you're up to. What is a man? There are a host of definitions, and I don't know which one you want to get to. because I, I, I want to know from you, what is a man? Are you a man? Yes. Okay. What is a man? What is a man? I, you, I want your definition of a man. You're not able to tell me. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm able to tell you. But what is a man? I'm able to tell you. What is it then? Generally speaking, a man is a male with X amount of experience in order to survive and thrive and perhaps take care of. That's your definition of a man? Yes. And um, do you have love? Yes. What is love? Love is, well, there's three types. You have agape, uh, you have philios. Which one do you have? I have all three. Oh, you do? And Actually, what, there's five, but I'm not going to get into that. That's which three do you have? All three. And are you an honest man? It depends. On what? To say absolutely that I'm honest would be dishonest. So it's hard to, it would be hard for you to admit that you're a dishonest man? No, that would be easy. Are you a dishonest man? At times I could be. So you're not an honest man? I don't know anyone on the planet who's honest 100% of the time. How about you? 100% of the time? No. You're not? I'm a sinner. There are times when you are not an honest man. In thoughts, yes. There are times when a lot... Who was... Tell me, is there anybody walking the planet who was honest 100% of the time? Let's talk to Stephen out of Texas. Stephen, we have a, about five minutes, four or five minutes left here. Hold on a minute. Let me see where are you. Oh, right here. Hello. Hey, Stephen, you're on with Gregory. Go right to your point hey, of question. Hey, Stephen. Okay. How you doing, Gregory? Pretty good here with Jesse. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a question. I, I wanted to ask you something. Um, sure. Earlier when Jesse was asking you about um, do you love white people, you said you love Eskimos, but for some reason you can't say you love white people. And I was wondering why is that? Well, first of all, I love white people. You know, here we are. This is Je This is my first time meeting Jesse, and we're on the radio and TV. We're having a good time. And so we, we just badger one another. That's, a, that's what that's about. Yeah, I got you. I that's got why you, you couldn't also, say you love white people? No. We're, we're, okay, well, go ahead, Stephen. What was the rest of your point? Well, uh, that was it. And the other thing is um, the definition of love is truth in all situations. Truth and in all, all situations. Thank all right. you, Stephen. Appreciate you. Christopher is out of California. Christopher, you're on with Stephen. Hi, how you doing? All is well. Go ahead, real fast. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a question for your guest. Okay. Um, All right, Christopher. Uh, it, yeah, you know how you said earlier that uh, that Trump has a uh, white superiority complex or something like that? Right. Yeah. Uh, is, I was wondering if that comes from maybe you feel that the, the blacks aren't the center of attention, and maybe that's why you think that he's only focused on one group because he's not paying too much attention to the blacks? Well, let me put it all in, let me put it all in, in perspective. Since the founding of this country, no president has put on has put the plight of blacks on par with the part with the no president has put the plight of blacks on par with the plight of whites. 
So that's across the board. Why should they be doing that? Shouldn't you put yourself on that? Why do you need? Why do the blacks need someone to make them feel good? Why do whites need someone to get them everything that they need? Why do blacks feel need someone to make them feel good? To question. It's not a matter of feeling good. It's a matter of being good. Why is it but that this group? Why is it that this group, can, why is it, that this group can be treated fairly and one group unfairly? Why do it's blacks not a need of someone good. to make them? Why do uh, whites have to have the whole game in their favor? They make the laws, they enforce the laws, and they benefit when the laws are broken. That's white superior well, complex in a nutshell. When they make the rules, when they uh, enforce the rules. When would they, you agree with me that white people are under attack more than any other race in America? And no. Why, white people are not under attack? Blacks are under attack are far white more people than whites. By whom? The whole thing. Go walk down the street and Who see how long it is before black people. the law enforcement, the court system, they are attacking blacks. When you so look you at, don't believe when you that at, white people under attack? Not nearly as much as black folks. Are white people under attack? In what respect? Amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, I, so it's, if, it's, um, it's fascinating to me. Christopher. Yes. Real fast. Go ahead, Christopher. Yeah, it, Black people are being under attack. Uh, maybe that's just because they're they're being called out for the things that they've done. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's only natural to feel defensive whenever you're getting called out. Thank you, man. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, thank Great you for show. coming on, Gregory. Oh, Jesse. You people are good to me. <laughs> <laughs> the hate report is coming up next. The hate report. Don't touch the dial. Thank you. I couldn't get to Paul and Paul Paulie and Arthur and everybody. I'm out of time. I'll be back tomorrow to Lord is willing and the creep don't rise. And we also do D live tomorrow. Super chats. All right. Thank you. Go to rebuildingtheman.com and support the move. Thank you.